Welcome to this Onshape tutorial. Today we're going to look at the sheet metal features in Onshape and we're looking at these designs in the bottom left hand corner. So we're going to look at creating uh, sheet metal designs which could be rolled, so basically the use of uh, arcs like this. And we're also going to look at how we can use the extrude okay, options to create designs like this which are cylindrical and this can then obviously be flattened out for manufacturing purposes uh, if we are going to create that using a sheet metal process. We have a number of tabs down the bottom. The one that's active at the moment gives us a quick overview of the different activities. And if you click on the icons here for YouTube, you can get access to the YouTube tutorials. And as you can see, there's a range of different activities, starting off with the easy one there and working around okay to this master activity. You can also click on this tab here. This gives you an overview to different resources and tutorials. And if you click on the YouTube one here, it gives you access to all the Onshape tutorials that I've created. We've also got in this okay document, okay, an example here of the okay model we're gonna have a go at creating. And we've also got a second example as well. So what we're going to do now is have a go at creating this design as you can see on the screen. So what we've created is a circular sketch here. But the key thing is to allow us to achieve this is we've created okay, a slight gap as you can see here. Okay. And that will allow us to then extrude that profile up to create the 3D ring. So if we go back here, okay, you'll see. So we've got our sketch. We then come down here and extruded that up, similar to the first okay, parts tutorial. I've then created a plane that is okay offset surface like that. Created a sketch and, and uh, extruded that in, and then I've used the circle pattern feature to repeat it. Okay, so a very powerful way of creating complex designs. Okay, in terms of cylindrical designs like this. So let's have a go at creating it. So I'm going to click on the plus, click on create part studio. Again, that will appear at the bottom. We're going to right click on it and we're going to name it. And it's important you name things so you can easily find them later, especially if you created something that's complex and it's going to have say 10, 15 part studios, which is possible. So first thing, let's have a look back at this initial, drag this back in time. Let's have a look at this initial sketch. So I've got 100 millimeters. So click a sketch, click on the top work plane, N for normalize, C for circle, I'll select to the top, and I'm gonna type in 100 like that. What we're gonna do now is, I'm just gonna see in this end here. I'm gonna use Okay, simple corner rectangle like that. And I'm just going to click enter to confirm that. And let's have a look at, okay, the gap that I created over here. So it's just a one millimeter gap, okay, either side of that. So if we come back over here, we're going to type in one millimeter. And we're going to dimension it from that center to there, okay, 0.5. Doesn't really matter about this length because I'm going to use the trim and I'm going to trim that in the center there and then I'm now going to remove okay all of these and you'll see the dimensions of that okay will disappear. I could define those points again. I just click on it and put those in, you'll see no, those will turn black because I've now okay defined those. So we've got a slight one millimeter gap. And I can give it a name, so I can say base sketch like that and confirm it. All right, it's important to do that because it will it makes it easier to create the sheet metal part. Now, if I try to okay extrude it, I could put a split in it. All right, but it's a slightly easier way of doing it. So if we go now up to sheet metal, what we're not going to do is use convert because we're not converting. We're not going to use thicken because I'm not thickening this. It's not a, say, a single profile. We're going to go to extrude and I'm going to select this. Just going to have a look at the dimensions I used on here. OK, 
Okay, let's spin this around. And let's have a look. So we've gone symmetric, so it's going to produce that either side of the sketch. 50 millimeters in total, so it's 25 at the top, 25 at the bottom. I've kept this to 1.5, okay, the thickness and the bend radius. And I've left all the K factor and gaps, okay, and everything else the same. We don't need to worry about these uh, relief types or bend types, okay, we could keep those, okay, the standard setting, all right. You will see we've changed those. If you watch the first tutorial and the second one as well, okay, I've shown you how to use those and how that affects your design. So, 50 millimeters, and let's go back to here. Okay, so we need to change this, and if I press F for fit, that might be a bit better. We're going to go 50 millimeters. At the moment, that's going to single bind direction. We don't want it to go like that or that. Remember, we want it to be symmetric, like so. Uh, 1.5, 1.5, and again, we can confirm that. Okay, what we're going to do now is select this and go into here and click plane, and I'm going to drag this Okay, and as long as it's not intersecting and it's off the surface, there's a gap, then that's fine. So if I'm going to round that up, say 60, like that. And again, if I want to give it a name, I can. We're now going to create a sketch on that work plan I've just created and flatten it pressing N for, for normalize. So if we go back into here, and let's check the dimensions of uh, this out, which I created. So click edit. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got a first of all we've got a 20 millimeter circle and then we've got a line that's 30 millimeters. So hopefully my brain can remember that. So let's have a look over here. C for circle or select circle at the top. Okay, we got that. And again, I just told you I forget. Okay, must be age, I think. So 20, not 30. 20 that. This line here going through. Okay, let's have a look. 30 millimeters, 15. That's fine. So, dimension is 30. And there's different ways of doing this, okay, but we, this is the easiest, like that. We're now going to create a slot. So, slot is hidden under here if you haven't selected it before. So, slot, select that. Okay, I'm going to go confirm that. I'm going to find my dimension. Where's my dimension gone? Oh, it's shot up here. And type in five. Okay. So that's uh, five millimeters in terms of its diameter there. And that should be correct. Excellent. Okay. And you see that sketch there. What I did then is just a simple, okay, bind extrude and remove it and then we've got a circle pattern and how many did I pattern is it yeah six okay so if we come over here to tutorial again we can repeat that so turn it in an angle so we can see what we're doing here I could give it a name so I could say uh, panel profile cut or feature cut whatever you want to call it and I could confirm it or I could just go into extrude like that. So it's selecting that and it's thinking we we want to okay create a solid new. No we don't. We want to remove it. And after a few seconds it's guessed it wants to go that way. Like so. Now there's different ways of doing this. You can go I wouldn't use through all because then it will go right through the other side. We could just do a simple one like this, okay, and as long as it's passing that point. Okay, we should be fine, and I could confirm that. And again, if I want to give it a, a name, like that, I can. And it's only okay affecting. We've only got one part, so it's affecting that. I could obviously click merge. We don't need a draft, and we don't want it to go in a second okay direction, a single blind direction. Okay. So if I turn some of these off. Because we get annoying like that and what we're going to do is create a circle pattern so circle pattern up here we don't want to pattern the part we'll try the feature first so features the pattern the cut 
the axis I'm going to use either the inside face like that or I can select an edge okay and that's doing four at the moment like that so that might be what we want to achieve but I actually use six okay so we've got six there and if you check out the previous tutorials I've done on patterning you know we've got lots of different options here as well so if we don't want it okay equal spaced and we want to do 45 and say three okay what that's doing is creating a 45 degree angle between each one of these all right and it's going in a certain obviously direction like that okay so it depends on what you want to pattern and again if you want to do centered it will then create it will look at your original one and create one two three on that side one two three on that side okay so what we're going to do actually is we're just going to go 360 okay within 360 degrees and we want six okay like that going to untick centered and therefore that area will go away and now we've created that really cool okay design and we can, again could give the feature a name if we want or we can just confirm it all right if you found that you've done something wrong remember as always you can go back into these sketches and features okay and uh, okay edit those and check those and if we come over here there we go we've got this now flat okay net or version of uh, okay of this so what we've learned then, if we just recap it, we've obviously created a, a sketch. We've left a very, very slight gap, okay, between it to allow that us then to, okay, extrude that up using the sheet metal features. We've uh, obviously applied a thickness, okay, and then we've decided to create an offset sketch, okay, on an offset work plane, cut that in, and then created a repeated, okay, pattern. If you wanted um say obviously this feature cutting out here but then you wanted a completely different feature okay say on the other side over here then all you'd have to do is select a plane like that okay go up to plane offset create an offset plane over here okay and again draw a sketch and cut that through all right so if you don't want a repeated pattern you could just do those in separate features Thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.